Welcome to episode 440 of the Barcelona Podcast, brought to you by Blue Wire Podcast Network. I'm Dan Hilton, and we are stepping outside of the first team season for just a second, at least just today, and then tomorrow it's Manchester United and all that stuff again. But we're stepping outside of the drama, even, of the surrounding the club, about the referee payments and all that stuff, to have a different and a fun conversation here on the podcast, because it is my pleasure, really my pleasure, to welcome the Director of Recruiting and Soccer Operations at Barca Residency Academy, the official soccer residency academy in the U.S. for FC Barcelona, Miha Klein. Welcome to the show, Miha. Hey, Dan. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. Enjoy uh, listening to your show and uh, looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, we're going to get into things that I, I think people just they just don't know about. Like, I'll get DMs all the time from from kids around the world saying, hey, how can I get into an academy or get into La Masia? And I tell them, well, actually, I'm an independent podcast. I'm not an affiliate of the club, so I'm sorry, but maybe I can find other places. But certainly this conversation is a place for, I, I think, young players even to get a start to understand about you know what the where the tentacles of FC Barcelona are around the world, particularly in the United States. So a little disclaimer at the start here. We're going to start with uh, Miha's expertise and mine too, to be honest, following American national team eligible players the way I do. I'm quite familiar with names that, again, most of our fans will not know, like Bryce Duke and like. So that does mean that the front part of this show, just to, again, put a disclaimer and warn people, it is pretty front-loaded with U.S.-based stuff. But then I do have plenty of questions for Miha about Barcelona's global reach and scouting that we will get into in the second half of the show. So starting off uh, with the reason for Miha coming on the show, and that is the history that was made last week, late last week, when Julian Araujo, formerly of the Los Angeles Galaxy, but more importantly for our purposes, formerly of the Barca Residency Academy, became the first former Barca Residency player to sign for the club. And I think for Miha, I, I begin with a congratulations on that one. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was a proud day, a historic moment, right? Obviously, uh, we, we couldn't be more proud of, 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 of Julian, right? And what he has achieved. And, and you know, while we all, you know, knew, and it's easy to say now, but we really were always kind of saying that he would be the one to, you know, probably down the line be the first one. Uh, and, you know, the goal was five in five first five years of the academy, right? And it ended up being five and a half. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll take it. Um, and it's been a very, very uh, you know exciting news for all of us that played you know a small part in 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 helping him get to that point. Well, to be very clear, Julian Araujo is signing for Barca Athletic because he missed the window. He cannot be registered to play for former. Well, fellow, but former Mexican international teamer, Rafa Marquez, but he can train with Barca Athletic. And in the summer, it should be expected he'll do the preseason with the first team. And I am interested to see how his contract is, is actually set up based on that. It seems like it was a three-year Barca Athletic deal, but I'm wondering what the first team trigger would be. I'm guessing it is obviously just first team registration, but I'm wondering if there are certain clauses in there about appearances and um, anything that could get him to the first team in, in some kind of timeline or something. Again, he is 20 years old, so you'd expect like a three-year deal. That does make sense as well, based on his timeline, based on the club's timeline. So either way, uh, Miha, it's pretty awful that he won't be able to play with Barca Athletic in the spring. But there is a part of me that is kind of glad that he can take some time to find his feet in Spain and hopefully hit the ground running next season. Because obviously, you know kool is They are always looking for the next player, always looking for the next star. You've got 18-year-old Gabi in the first team and everyone's who's next who's next <laughs> you know <laughs> so i think for julian it might be good just to have him you know not be annoyed at the same year at right back at fc barcelona's first team uh for at least six months he has some time so i would ask then too what is your experience in working with julian i believe what in 2017 right uh i mean i know that he was kind of in and out of the academy pretty quickly but um just working with julian in particular what did you see from him even what was it six years ago now when he was a, a young player yeah, I mean, he, he was with us from the start of the, you know, in our inaugural year, right, 2017, and then all the way through that season, and then half of the next season as well, right, on the U19s, uh, before he then signed with Galaxy, I, I believe it was February that he officially then 2019 uh, that he signed. Uh, but, you know, Julia was just a, it was just a special play, right? You could, you, you know, we saw that, you know, a long time ago, right, just the way the tenacity he brought to the game uh, and then at the same time, such a calmness on the ball and so much, uh, he was just gliding when he was driving with the ball, right? And there, there, we, there's one game I remember very vividly. We, we were playing here at home against Portland and, and, and he just, I mean, at the best 45 minutes I've seen a youth player play, you know, just took on four or five players down the line as a right back, right? And just glided past them, created chances, uh, you know, defensively, just 
so athletically gifted as well, right? And the timing of tackles and so forth. So uh, it was it was just joy to, to to work with and and to watch grow in front of our eyes, right? But also such a tremendous young man, um, just uh, you know personality, uh, you know really determined, really focused. Uh, so if you didn't know him on the outside, you could see you know he's serious, he's but. You know, he had an amazing banter, was very, very, you know, uh, brother-like, you know, to all of his teammates. Um, and just, uh, um, you know, the the one thing I really, really love to see now that he's been at Galaxy, right? And obviously before he left to, to Spain, um, just a lot of the community service he has done, right? Uh, with his parents being, you know, working, you know, many, many years on the fields and, and uh, you know, doing all these contributions and donations and, and charity work, right? Uh, which was amazing to see because we try to instill that in our players here at the academy with our residential staff does a lot of these types of things with them. And it clearly stuck with them, right? Uh, uh, with, with him and, and, and has continued to do that. And obviously on a higher scale, but uh, you know, like you said, in the, you know, in the, in the, in the intro a little bit, right? We, we try to really focus on developing not just players, right? Obviously, to be the best versions of themselves, right, and reach as high as they can, but to be great, outstanding young men, right? That will be good ambassadors of the program, of the brand, of Barca, right? Uh, um, wherever they end up, right, in the future. Well, two things I think that you kind of mentioned there that I've always noticed from watching him with the Galaxy, uh, and that, as you just mentioned, is interesting to me, that make me believe that he might have some success overseas in Europe is one. I've always noticed with the Galaxy that mentally he's a gamer. As you've said, he can he talks with the best of them. He gets into it. He doesn't get rattled. He'll commit a hard foul. But, I mean, just like Gabi, if there's something that he has to fix about that, you know, being a little less aggressive at times, but still not sacrificing anything of that mentality, right, of that gamer mentality, I know he always had that with the Galaxy, not rattled in that way, doesn't, doesn't, isn't scared of the moment. And then part two of that is it is very rare, honestly, when you're talking about U14, U15s, to have – players start as fullbacks and continue on all the way through as fullbacks. Because even FC Barcelona's first team, you're talking about Balde was a left winger. Yeah. Uh, Alba was a left winger. Um, uh, Ricky Puj, going back to speaking of Galaxy, was a center forward, was a false nine. So it's very rare to see a U14 player right back continue on that path. And so for him to be so comfortable in that spot, I'm a little less afraid about that big number 20. Um, but yeah, so kind of moving away from Julian now, because we have so much to get through here. Uh, before we go too much farther, it seems like a simple question for you, but I do see this question a lot. Why can't one of your kids go from Arizona to FC Barcelona and immediately be brought over to La Masia at the age of 14 or 15? Yeah, it's a, it, it's a great question. And, you know, while it's a frustrating answer, right, because <laughs> we... We believe we have some players that could really do well there right now, and we see it when we take them over, right? Like, for example, the last two players, 2008, right, that were there just last two weeks, right, did really well, right? The initial reports are very good and, and you know, could easily be immersed and benefit from it, right, and bring quality to the team as well, especially in some of the positions they might not have an abundance of, right, like a center back or, or the wingers, right? Um um, but, uh, you know, we're all facing with the FIFA regulations, right. And, and about minor players, right. And unless a player has a European passport, right. Uh, um, he cannot obviously move abroad, abroad, uh, until the age of 18. Right. Um, now there are some exceptions, you know, with, uh, parents moving for work purposes and all that stuff. Right. But that's easier said than done. Right. Um, and, you know, it was a very similar to go back to Julian, right? We brought him there in, you know, in 2018, in, 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 in the beginning of 2018, and he was outstanding, right? They absolutely loved him then. He, he, he did great with Juvenil out when he was training there, right? And uh, um, left a tremendous impression, but he was 16, right? So, again, no European passport, uh, and they had to postpone, postpone. And, of course, right, when you're that good, somebody's going to, pull you in as soon as Galaxy did, right? And, and, and it worked out very well for him, right? Uh, um, but it would have been nice, right, if, he, if those obstacles were not there and he did go, uh, you know, at 16 and killed it at uh, La Masia and then already play at 17 with the Barca Athletic, right, with B and, and then maybe now be a Barca A player already, right? Um, but 
you know, with, 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 with that said, right, every player has to take those steps and uh, it clearly worked out, right? So we'll, 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 we'll continue to watch uh, how he does it with excitement. So. Well, I know American fans will ask, well, how come Adrian Gill over there, or Adrian Gill, who's playing, I believe, with a kid at Oz at the moment, U16s, why, why does he's an American player playing for the U.S. U-17s, and why is he able to play there? Well, that's because, as you just mentioned, his family got work over in Barcelona. He originally started at the Cornea Academy, yeah. and no offense to the Cornea Academy, but FIFA isn't cracking down on, on them the way they are, <laughs> that the FC Barcelona's and the Chelsea's and the Juventus's of, of the Academy world. Um, so by, by starting at Cornea because of work, that means his, his parents had the work permit to get him into La Masia. And that is why you're seeing a U.S. player over there at the moment. Um, same story for Conrad de la Fuente going back a little bit too. Gotcha. So speaking now about your academy and kind of putting you in the microscope here, the three main players, and by players, I mean bodies that we're talking about with the academy's history is, of course, Real Salt Lake, Casa Grande Sport, and FC Barcelona. Can you discuss how those three parties collaborated then on what exists today? Yeah, so for, first, uh, to, just for clarity purposes, right, these are two completely separate uh, chapters almost, right? There's no connection between the RSL years and the Barcelona years, right? So Grande Sports World is the, the, the thing that connects everything, right? Um, that's the, the, you know, the whole facility, the property, the, the ownership, uh, the general manager um, that started that in 2010 already. And at that time, right, with, uh, um, you know, with so much land available and, uh, you know, the soccer on the uprise right here in the States and really garnering, you know, a lot of interest, a lot of traction, a lot of excitement, uh, they decided to, you know, build a facility, build a field, build a gym, build the locker rooms and so forth. And then, yes, needed a partner, right, to get to get started. And the RSL at the time, uh, you know, um, uh, was, the, was the ideal partner at the time, right, and, the, uh, you know, worked well for, you know, it was a hybrid, right? It was similar, but not the same as with Barcelona, right? Um, and then we, in 2015, kind of started looking into, you know, kind of a, maybe increasing, uh, you know, the level we've had, you know, a lot of uh, kind of experience already uh, going into European flavors, waters, right? And, and kind of uh, was, we're connected with Barcelona and have discussed, you know, all sorts of details with them for two years. Um, and at the same time, right, you, RSL was moving to Utah, right? So it was perfect kind of timing uh, for us to then that start 2017. And, uh, um, you know, that was then, you know, a brand new thing uh, that, uh, you know, we reassembled a brand new team with exception of myself and the general manager and obviously the ownership. Um, and it's been, you know, a tremendous growth, uh, you know, from that first year to today. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it, it was, it, it is still, right, um, such a huge advantage and a benefit for young players uh, uh, to be able to be fully immersed into residency. Because if you do things the right way, right, and provide all the resources, they have so many tools to work with, right, to really hone into, you know, tap into that potential, really reach for the ceiling, break through it, right? With all sorts of, you know, guidance and, and training and, and, and our mentors and coaches. And we have, a, you know, a wellness um, um, director as well who takes care of, you know, all the psychological stuff, uh, you know, obviously strength and conditioning, nutrition, uh, medical staff and so forth, right? So that really helps them. And I wish there were more, you know, in the, in, in the country. And, you know, you see MLS teams starting to kind of try to, get something going, right, uh, with exception, obviously, of Arcel and, and Philly, right, who do it really well uh, as well, um, you know, kudos to them, and uh, I know it's an investment, right, but but the advantages of, of that versus just, you know, being a good training environment, like an academy academy, are still huge, right, and obviously for us, right, as Barcelona, right, uh, and I'm sure we'll get into that in more detail later, um, you know, just the whole you know, the training methodology, the, the things we teach the boys, how we prepare them for those next chapters in life, uh, uh, you know, in terms of professional uh, pathways uh, or collegiate, right, for that matter. But, um, uh, you know, are, are tremendous here, right? So, Well, yeah, I mean, I, you, as you just mentioned, you hit about my next seven questions. I think you dabbled into each of them. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's get into more specifics about yeah. kind of 
each of what you just mentioned. Um, because yeah, I want to get into all of that. Uh, beginning, I, I think, with what you mentioned about the growth of the academy, but also what FC Barcelona is kind of continuing to invest year over year after year. Because I think you watch at the first team level, and not to tie this to what's happening now with the referee payments or whatever, but look at the turnover and look what always seems to be happening in Catalonia. <laughs> Just there's a constant drama, right? I mean, you and I both like, you know, working with the club and like, we know that it, it, is, it is constant noise out of Catalonia, but as far as year to year, building up something from 2017 to now, and then what kind of, as you mentioned, not only the methodology, but what kind of resources that FC Barcelona provides your Academy. And then also, again, what does, you know, Grande sports world also provide, and then again, just speaking to that growth from 2017 to now, um, you know, I, I think certainly there are challenges when, again, the president of the of the club that's that's helping with your academy can change from year to year because it's a it's again a club that is owned by members, so that means presidents change with elections and things like that, and how that can affect your mission and what you're trying to do. But from 2017 to now, yeah, how have things grown? How have things gotten better? And uh, how does FC Barcelona again continue to provide the academy with the resources it needs? Plus, again, whatever Grande Sports World was providing. Yeah, that's a it's a great question. It's a you know uh, uh, would take years to uh, explain <laughs> um, uh, in detail, but uh, sure. uh, you know I'll try my my, my best, right? So it, it truly is a partnership, right? So um, um, you know in in what in that sense that you know Grand Sports World and FC Barcelona provide you know certain certain things to make this uh, uh, you know success, right? And uh, uh, with that, you know, in Barcelona side, right? Obviously, you know, the brand recognition, the style of play, the methodology, right? The the all the know-how, uh, as well as two technical directors, right? That are here uh, from La Masia, move to the states and are here with us full time, right? Um, then that uh, you know they oversee the development of coaches. They help with me in terms of player profiles, in terms of scouting. Um, they assist, you know, they they create all the top players, uh, player reports, send them to the scouting department to Barcelona regularly, right? So that we can then kind of compile the top candidates to go over, potential candidates for the future and so forth, right? Um, so it's definitely, uh, you know, uh, we're very, very lucky to be able to to have access to that. And then when we go over there, right, uh, you know, uh, Sergi Barajuan, who's, uh, you know, the new technical director, a legend of Barcelona, right? Uh, is coming, you know, is coming here uh, next month, uh, next week, actually, um, you know, for a visit and to see a couple of the players uh, to discuss some of the dates, uh, you know, for for some next visits for the top level uh, uh, prospects and so forth. Um, so that, that, that that's on that side, right? And on our side, right, with Grande Sports World, we provide all the staff, like the, the, the coaches, the, uh, the support staff we have, you know, 35 staff members on the academy side, right? Um, um, as well as then, you know, the whole complex because you have a hotel as well and all the, you know, the kitchen, the 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 the, the, the uh, housekeeping and so forth, right? So there's a lot of support staff there to make this run operationally, right? And and successfully there on the field, um, as well as obviously the school through ASU prep, right? Which is, uh, um, you know, a very, very important thing because no matter how good we are, no matter how many good players we produce, that's still going to be five, ten percent, right? And then the other ninety go to college, right? Initially, right? Um, and then from there on, right? Whether, a second, yep. Yeah. So we'll, we, we 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 can get to that as well. But uh, then you know, obviously, the the whole scholarship fund, right? Um, we invest on the ground sports side a lot, right? In terms of making uh, you know this very very um, accessible to the top top level player, right? Um, you know because of the, the, there is so many good players that are sought by probably five, six, seven clubs, right? You need to level the playing field, right? And and yeah. uh, um, you know that's how we're able to you know attract uh, you know the the Bryce Jamesons, the you know the Julians, the Hoppies, the Cadens, the Brooklyns, right? And Luna, uh, Diego Luna, right? Who's another exceptional, exceptional player. Excited to see how he does this year, but. Um, you know, and then as well as you know, obviously all the facilities, right? Um, you know, we we have uh, uh, you know great eight fields. Uh, um, you know, the gym, uh, obviously the dorms, right? Uh, with the plan to build new dormitories in the next two years as well uh, to kind of start completely separating. Because when we were in Barcelona, right, we met a lot with the uh, director of residency as well to see 
how everything runs with Lama, you know, with La Masia staff, how many they have, what the timing, what the, you know, the security and all like all the little details, right? That matters to get as close as possible to La Masia structure, right? Um, and it's you know, it was very, very, very kind of uh, enlightening to meet with all those people over there, right? As well as you know, the scouting guys to see um, you know what exactly they look for in players, how in those local smaller clubs, uh, um, you know, uh, around Barcelona. So um, that's kind of a, you know, the cohesive partnership that we've, you know, really uh, kind of built on from 2017 to now, right? There's more and more inclusiveness. When we go there, everybody knows where we're coming from. They know what we've done. They know the players that came out. They are upset about players that they might have missed out on, right? <laughs> you know, because of, again, because of rules and regulations as well, right? But... But just, uh, um, you know, it, it's very good to just uh, continue to build on that and build the reputation together, right, of, of yes, being the real thing and producing, uh, you know, top-level players for, you know, uh, down the line, national team, right, as well, of course. Yeah, I mean, you, again, I think you kind of answered one of my next questions, and that was, it was going to be what kind of relationship outside of having an early scouting report does Barcelona have with these young players? And that's the answer, is that, of course, with the limitations of getting them over to Barcelona's academy, of course, it's it's a lot better for those players, I mean, many of them in the United States, to look at those MLS academies at the highest level and consider what's happening there. I think from the U.S. sense, we, we actually, you you mentioned two of the names that we've seen almost opposite pathways, if you will, to the professional ranks, that being Matthew Hoppies going from Schalke, uh, going to Schalke, which is an interesting road for him, though, since Schalke, it was then Mallorca in the Liga, so uh, Kule saw him for like a hot second there, and then, again, it was, uh, now he's at Hiberian in Scotland via a loan from Middlesbrough, so, I mean, four different countries all in Europe um, from, uh, basically, from Barca uh, Residency Academy, but then also Caden Clark is the more, we'll say, traditional pathway but instead of doing it through a Barcelona feeder thing, he winds up joining the New York Red Bulls Academy at the final stages of his development. And then he goes from New York Red Bulls, debuts at, what was he, 16 at the time, right? Scores a few goals when he's 17. And then he's bought by RB Leipzig under the same umbrella because obviously there's Red Bull, New York Red Bulls and RB uh, Salzburg and uh, RB Leipzig or Red Bull Salzburg, rather. I want to get all the branding right. Yeah. And then RB Leipzig all under the same umbrella, right? Um, and so it's a little more... With the with these say big uh, conglomerations who own multiple clubs, again you talk about Citigroup as well, and more of a we'll say nefarious way. But because Barcelona doesn't, it, they don't necessarily have a you know a feeder professional team, if you will. They don't have other uh, underneath the same big conglomerate. It is a matter of you know it is an academy. I mean, you're, it, it's the same thing like as we're going to get into with we talked a little bit about Barca School in a second. Um, but there are academies and camps around the world, but it, it's not like a uh, yeah a team that's owned by the same ownership group, uh, if you will. So uh, speaking of that, um, as far as getting into the teenagers now themselves, as you mentioned too, and this is always the most important thing, where I, I think, again, faces like Gabi, faces like, well, uh, I mean, not even Araujo, but uh, Balde, Gabi, those kind of players almost make you think, uh, Elash uh, Mariba coming up a few seasons ago, you get this idea that, well, it, you know, there's so many La Masia players who can always come to the first team and there's there's always an next player up. And, and certainly Barcelona's academy is one of the best in the world. Uh, and as it continues to expand and kind of put more and more players under their scouting umbrella, um, you know, there, there's a, a larger pool to work from. But as you mentioned, if 1% make the Barca first team, uh, which is, again, Julian Araujo, would be the 1% if he plays for the first team, right? And if 1% reads the, the first team, great. But as you mentioned, if 5% or 10% or 15% become professionals, that is even something for you to hang your hat on as well. So I would ask, what are some of the difficulties in preparing teenagers, not just for a professional career, but those who won't be professionals? Because I think it is a weird atmosphere where you have kids at 15 looking around going, well, we all think we're pros now, but... I'm not going to be a pro. And at 15, I have to understand that because my best buddy is possibly going to be playing in, in uh, Hungary in four years. You know what I mean? And we don't know that, right? Um, and then, and then to, on top of that, your own experiences as a player playing over in Europe, how did that help you, you know, connect to these teenagers with some of those difficulties about, the again, not even the few who won't make it, but the majority who won't make it, if you will, um, just getting them prepared for something. And I know you already mentioned scholarships, and I don't want to take away your answer, but uh, the U.S., Having that option is a bit different than everywhere else in the world. Yeah, you 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 you, you hit the nail on the head right there, right? Like, uh, I mean, there's there's a few things that I'll, I'll try to really capture all of it. Um, 
it's a great, great uh, topic, right? A great question because we are in the business of developing, you know, good young men that will be geared for future success, right? Whether it's on the field or off the field, whether it's professional or collegiate, right? Whatever it is. And, and with that, right, it, it's very important to, to number one, as you guide them through and, and help them navigate through these, you know, teenage years, high school years, right? Which they're with us, like 13 to 18, right? And, and really kind of navigate that ship towards, you know, the end goal. You need to really be honest and transparent with them, right? And, you know, because when you ask them at the beginning, everybody wants to be a professional player, of course, right? And they should always chase that dream as long as they can. And we will be there to help them become the best possible version of themselves on the field, right? However, there's a lot of things that have to align for you to become a professional player, right? Because at the same time, now that there's so many professional levels, yeah, you can sign a, what, a USL1 low-end deal and you lose eligibility, you know, uh, to, to get a college scholarship, but you're not going to get a lot, right? So, again, it's not a right or wrong here, right? It's just then you have to be conscious of these, this, uh, you know, uh, variables when you make the decision for them and the parents. And later on, you know, if there's an agent in the play, we always kind of sit down and discuss, you know, the timing, the options, the pros and cons, and so forth, right? Uh, um, and then, you know, to just go a little bit further back, right? It, you know, uh, um, you know, it, I kind of mentioned it in one of the earlier answers, right? Really focusing on that wholesome approach, right? Like 360, as a young man, as a good student, right? Uh, because you need to be educated, you know, regardless of how good you are. Even if you end up professional level, right? You need to know how to communicate properly through social media, you know, social media etiquette, through, you know, with fans, with media, um, you know, manage your money, right? Uh, uh, you know, really uh, be a good teammate, be a good, uh, you know, uh, um, know what respect, be respectful, know what integrity is, uh, and be, you know, be a good leader, right? All those things we have time to do here in residency, right? And it's important because we are preparing them for the non-pro life. The pro life is, is, is a bonus, right? If you're good enough, all these things will help you as well, right? But like you said, 90% will probably have to go to college. And, and, and again, we also remind them that's not a done deal. You go to college, yes, like uh, Roberto Molina had a great year at Irvine, went, you know, signed with, uh, you know, Las Vegas, right? After one year. You have guys that were there for two years and then signed. You have guys that finished four years degree and now got MLS, uh, drafted at MLS, right? So... So there's a lot of different pathways that the players will take and have taken, and, and it's exciting, right? They just can uh, uh, need to know that there are other options, that this is the time to really set yourself up for plan B, plan C, plan D, should the plan A not work out. Because maybe it's not just quality. Maybe it's injury, right? And I share my story with them all the time, right? I played, like you said, in Europe, right? In, you know, in, in Slovenia, where I'm from, right? For... For a number of years, then we played, you know, really good two seasons at Domžale, you know, played in UEFA, uh, you know, played against Stuttgart really well. Trapatoni, the coach, saw me, right, and, you know, said some nice things in the newspaper, right, and the interest started coming in. And, you know, I went to Russia, first division, uh, you know, then I, that was an experience, right, uh, you know, good level, but, you know, also shady, right, a lot, you know, so... Um, you know, went to, you know, went to Greece and as well. And then, you know, kind of went, kind of made my wealth to way to uh, Holland. And, you know, where I'm getting at with this is, you know, I was getting ready to then sign the contract, right? And they find, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, I have a medical test, uh, you know, and I did uh, get, uh, uh, you know, two, two months later, I have an open heart surgery, right? And I never play again. So, Mm -hmm. nobody prepares you for that and yeah. that 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 leads me to what you said earlier right uh that's why college is so important because in europe you don't have that in america right this system of collegiate sports and scholarships and and still you know kind of getting almost four extra years of development debatable right because it's only you know how good it is because it's only three months right uh, uh and very very limited right but still right you grow up you mature uh, you are still playing some some colleges play very good level of soccer, right, and and good style as well. Um, 
but it gives you extra years if if you're maybe not physically ready for pro or if you're not you know maturity wise ready for pro or whatnot right so anyway i then back then had to go at 28 back to college and finish my degree and went to the states and did my masters right and then got involved with uh, IMG Academies with MLS in New York front office right and and then got obviously here and I've been here now for 10 plus years and it's been amazing right being able to kind of use all my experience all my mistakes all the good stuff all the experience on the uh, you know um, in the youth landscape the camps the the scouting and so forth and kind of help the boys navigate you know all those waters together with our amazing staff right which uh, we all kind of uh, try to create a culture on campus of, of, of us being here solely for the kids, right? Winning, yes, of course, everybody likes to win and you want to breed winning mentality, but doing things the right way is is what gets you far, right? So hopefully that answers the question a little bit. <laughs> no, I think that answers the questions quite a lot, uh, to be honest, because again, I, I cannot stress enough that the sheer number of kids that are involved, not only in this academy, but in so many academies around the world, but also not even academies, but the camps, right? And I think in the US, and this actually winds up being an argument too in Brazil, in Argentina, in countries with huge populations. And while Brazil and Argentina do have international success and, you know, everything is kind of boiled down to the success of 22 players at a World Cup, right, or international competition and that's an entire referendum an entire country right and, and the same thing happens in germany how germany when they crash out in the group stage of the of the world cup you go well why aren't there a top level well there are there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of them. but in the u.s as you mentioned there are 328 million people in the u.s so what are the challenges though of scouting all across the country and is that approach different from the u14 level to the u19 level because i do know that there are other camps or academies in the u.s that being in Columbus, Chicago, New York, Charlotte, Austin, Orlando, and Miami. But those aren't residency programs. It's something we've kind of laid out, that there is a difference between a residency program and a just like, and a camp or an academy that you train with and, and the like. So, yeah, wh- I mean, what is the approach to scouting just around the world? And is it so much as those camps and those other academies are really important to kind of feeding the best of the best to you? He- yeah, I mean, we, we that, it's a great question, right? And uh, uh, yes, it, it is an enormous talent pool, right, here in the States. And in the last three, four years, you know, finally everybody around the world, especially in Europe, obviously started to really realize that, right, and trying to really get, you know, like I said earlier, tentacles in the, you know, in the country. Um, we here try to really just kind of, you know, it has, to, because it's such a vast country, it has to be a hybrid of a number of things, right? You have to try to leave no stone unturned right uh and try to you know go to as many events and, and scout in person as you can right um but of course right it, it, there's so many and there's so many at the same time right too uh and if you don't have uh, this vast scouting network right you have to you know improvise a little bit right build good relationships with play uh with players or former players and and and, and, and some agents or some uh you know just kind of colleagues right who who are in different places in the country who give you, uh, you know, a heads up, uh, this kid from Mississippi, right? Uh, yeah, let's take, you know, let's take a closer look, you know, review some videos, some film, then invite them in, get to know them, invite the family, get to know them, right? And see if it's a good fit, right? Uh, and so forth. And, and you know, it, as long as you get that and try to kind of kind of cover the whole country to a degree, right? Uh, you know, the better, right? Because we all know, we all know the top players, right? Uh, the top hundred, top two hundred in each age group, right? Uh, uh, you know, and everybody's after those top twenty, right? Uh, but it's the undiscovered ones, right? That you try to then kind of bring in early yeah. and hone within your system, right? And try to help them, uh, um, you know, just be, you know, uh, reach reach for the stars, right? In a way. Um, but to touch on the academies, right? Yes, you know, obviously. The same as us, that has grown very well in terms of, you know, um, the quality that they are able to bring in because it is a pathway to us, right? We hold, for example, once once a year, uh, every year we hold a, a, a big camp of pre-selected players, top players from each of these acad- local academies, right? Uh, and bring them in and kind of see, you know, uh, who's ready for residency, who's at the level, right? Um, and that obviously helps them then bring in better players, Um uh, they've competed at a better level. Uh, they've better results, um, you know, and it's 
but it is it is a little bit of different format, right? Because it's not necessarily a direct, direct relationship, right? It is through the partners they have here in the States, right? Same as the camps, right? Uh, and so, um, you know, but at the same time, the more young players at the very, very young age, grassroots ages, right? Uh, uh, you can expose to the to the training philosophy, to, you know, to, to, to the drills, to the rondos, to the, to, you know, to the, just the, the basic, the fundamentals that sticks with them, right? You're planting a seed, right? And then, um, you know, when they are ready or, uh, uh, you know, come in for a trial or, 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 you know, if they're already at a level, we invite them in, um, you know, the better, right? And so it's all, you know, just has to continuously improve and grow gradually, right? Uh, nothing happens overnight, but have, can say comfortably now six years into this, right? This is our sixth year. Um, you know, it's been a tremendous growth in many areas, right? And 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 with that comes obviously the success stories, right? Which is what what we're here for, right? Um, um, but also, you know, just sheer kind of experience, right? Because now you can, uh, you know, now you can tap into that, and it really helps you plan accordingly for the next, uh, uh, you know, wave of, you know, now 2009s, 2010s, 2011s, right? Uh, where to go? Who to talk to, um, you know, when, when when to invite families in and so forth. Because we gotta follow a lot of rules within the league as well, right? Just MLS next league, right? In terms of yep. recruiting and and when and who's who, when can you approach them and so forth, right? So it's not um, it's not just you know, well, I like this player, bring him in. <laughs> you know, I wish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and of course, I have a few more questions for you, and and you kind of lead me to that another one of those difficult points again every country is completely different so we have mainly been talking about the united states with the individual challenges that the u.s has which uh, again you know it's a whole conversation we could have about uh just a lack of futsal and a, and a lack of you know we'll say grassroots street uh, just uh, kids with balls out on, on streets and things like that and how that those are challenges in the u.s and establishing a culture as much as it is establishing like actual brick and mortar buildings and programs and things like that um and making a cultural thing but speaking yeah kind of again of, of protecting the kids and when you have access to them and when um, they could move to the academy and things like that. Um, as far as when you find that top level talent and, est and establish that those are kind of the players that you've selected, uh, how is it the challenge of dealing with the cost of tuition and the kind of the, the different backgrounds that players can come from? Because you do hear a lot of it, especially I, we always bring up Brazil, like all of those, if you will, rags to riches stories about kids who didn't have shoes and then they learned how to play with the ball and and then they were picked up by Sao Paulo or by Corinthians or Palmeiras and and found their way. So how do you deal with um, what is, again, people can Google it. I'm not going to, we can't litigate it here, but uh, the cost of the tuition being just I mean, so high because again, a residency program is not a cheap operation for you, understandably. Yeah, no, it's a great question. I'm glad you glad you brought it up, right? Because there's a lot of, you know, um, you know, misunderstanding maybe when you're looking for the outside in, and you know, rightfully so. You only see what somebody shared, or you know, you see it when you said Google it, right, and it's right there. Um, but 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 that's where you know our scholarship, which is an immense investment each year, right? Uh, a scholarship fund that we work with, right? Uh, that helps us then build top quality rosters for all eight teams, right? Because the way we're structured here, right? We have four top teams, MLS Next, right? Uh, where kind of all the top talent goes to. And then we have, uh, you know, the EA teams, which is kind of our, almost like an extended pool of players, not necessarily second level, right? In a way, yes, but... Uh, just so that, you know, players that maybe bloom a little later or, you know, uh, have the potential but are not there yet, but the other player might be leaving with a professional signing, so you're the next one to fill those uh, those shoes, right? Because we try to keep rosters relatively small, right, uh, and not do one roster of 36, but rather do two teams of 20 and 16, right, or 18 and 18, right? Um, and so that everybody gets an abundance of playing minutes and which is essential for development, right? Right. Um, but with you know, we we with the you know, on touch of the, the tuition and the scholarships, right? So that's where that comes into play, right? And we really, you know, a player that we believe has the quality, has the character, uh, uh, you know, needs financial assistance, uh, or not, right? Uh, if he earns it based on solely on merit, that's you know, he will get a full scholarship as well, right? So we have a number of those, and then we try to, you know, really kind of uh, obviously, it's a it's a math game, right? You gotta make sure that from the X amount of scholarship funds, you can make it work with every family of the player that you want here, right? 
Um, now, does that mean, you know, we're fully funded yet? No, of course not. Is that the goal? Absolutely, right? Uh, uh, at least on the MLS next level, right? Um, uh, but, right, uh, there's also many, many stories, uh, or, or, you know, of the players that came in first year, um, you know, obviously we know there's potential, but they still need to prove it, right? Uh, um, you know, so maybe they get, uh, you know, a, a big parcel scholarship, right? But then by the year two or year three, they're on the full for the next next two years, right? Because they've earned it, because they are what we projected them to be and so forth, right? So it, there's constantly a little bit of fluidity and a little bit of, uh, you know, adjustments here and there. But, uh, you know, all the top players, right, that, 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 that we know will eventually are on that pro pathway, you know, are fully funded. So. All right. Well, uh, kind of we're wrapping it up with three quick more questions. I guess this last one's not really quick, but then the last two are quick, I promise. So, <laughs> so taking more of a global approach to this, step in for a second here. Barca does have Barca Academy camps in nearly 40, 40 countries around the world with more than 40,000 kids identified. Um, and it, unbelievably, and the reason why I'm speaking to you, yes, it's because, you know, you are U.S. based, sure, but yours is the only residency academy that Barcelona has in the world. There is an academy in, um, and again, when we talk about academy, we're talking about um, uh, programs that are and fields specifically designed for Barca academies and 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 identifying talent in that way. So there are academies in Sao Paulo, not just camps, again, like one day a weekend camps, there are academies in Sao Paulo, one in Jordan, one in Istanbul, in Turkey, Dominican Republic, Mexico City, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, or Saudi Arabia. There is four in India, Budapest, Warsaw, Singapore, five in Japan, plus in Barcelona itself, there is an academy called Barca Escola. So it, it's very confusing as you're kind of getting in all this stuff between Barca Escola and La Masia because La Masia is the academy residency program at FC Barcelona at the club. And then Barca Escola is the academy program <laughs> that still incorporates other kids. Uh, at Barca Escola, by the way, is also players 6 to 12 years old. So most of them are pre-La Masia age. So a lot of times if a player from Barca Escola is good enough, then they go to the, what is it, the Benjamin A level at at, at yeah. 10 years old or 11 years old yeah. and make the jump there. Then, as I already mentioned, in the U.S., there are um, academy programs in Columbus, yeah. Chicago, New York, Charlotte, Austin, Orlando, and Miami, but not, again, residencies for you. So I, I'm going to, after mentioning all that, I'm going to make it easier for you, though. <laughs> How soon do you think there will be another residency program academy like yours, likely at, I mean, I would assume it'd be likely at one of those locations, because, again, it's a lot easier to build out a program than it is to kind of start something from scratch, obviously, as you know. Um, but yeah, where do you think the next residency program is going to be for FC Barcelona? Whew, that's a million dollar question, right? Uh, I know that there, that there, there, um, there is some exclusivity to the, you know, to the residency program, right? So that we are, like you said, the only one in the world outside of La Masia, right? Um, and it is the bigger, the biggest pool of players almost, right? I mean, of course, right? If you go to India, right? And you start something there, right? It, not sure what their plans are to be honest right because this is obviously uh, uh you know separate uh department right and and people responsible for that growth um all i can say is you know that it's absolutely it would be very beneficial for the market for barcelona in the long run right uh um in terms of you know developing youth and 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 having you know reach around the world the problem still is right like like we would have, you know, we have a lot of players reaching out to us from Barca, Sao Paulo or Barca, uh, New Delhi or Barca, you know, can they come for a trial? And I say, you can mm -hmm. come for a camp, but unless you are 18 or if you are a dual citizen, we have U.S. citizenship, you cannot yeah. play here. You cannot join the residency, right? And so with that said, right, maybe that's more the reason why they could start something else, right? But it is a big investment right like you said it's a operationally it's a huge beast to run right and and uh um you know not it probably depends on the quality of the market right as well you you're not going to start it for maybe two players in in you know in in 10 years right again that is top of the top yeah. right but to go to barcelona you, you need to be a gabi right uh um you know it, it, you know that, that's the top of the tops but um you, you you get my point so I just think that, uh, um, you know, they yeah. probably have considered it and are still considering it, uh, uh, you know, whether it happens or when, I unfortunately don't know that. Uh, but I do 
you know, for, as you can tell, I fully believe in, in, in the benefits uh, of residency for the players. Yeah, I mean, and the locations even I mentioned, we talk about Sao Paulo and we talked about um, the four the four locations in India, as I mentioned, Mexico City, as well as even the five in Japan. A lot of that is talking about untapped markets where you know that there is a lot of people, there's a lot of players, and it is finding those diamonds in the roughs in those locations in particular. So, I mean, I'm the one, since I have no idea, <laughs> I'm the one who's kind of saying, and if I didn't mention Istanbul as well, I'm kind of throwing those names out to say, I mean, clearly there's a lot of kids there who are getting in more and more passionate about the game and very much like the U.S. You're seeing the grassroots in Japan in India kind of picking up and accelerating at a pretty uh, an astounding level. So if Barcelona has their reports and their scouts there, because again, in Brazil, in Argentina, uh, there are a lot of scouts, right? There's a lot of scouts in Germany and France. And uh, I mean, it, it's a, lo- a little more difficult for those kids to go under the radar as opposed to where these uh, academies are. So last two for you now, how can people learn more? Because I know I'm going to I'm going to probably get a ton of questions. You're probably going to get a lot of ton of questions when I, I link your Twitter here. So how can people learn more about the academy and where they can start to understand if either their kids or if their kids at the time, if they are at the level um, again? Yeah, we can mention this from the U.S. perspective, but even a global perspective, just, uh, you know, where is that first place where they kind of can test the waters and get their feet wet with understanding what their level is of what the expectations are to potentially, again, um, if they were ever to be at the Residency Academy or something like that? Yeah, the, thanks for, 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 for that question, right? It's, it, it's great to, uh, um, you know, introduce as many people, as many, you know, players, uh, aspiring professionals, right, to 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 maybe, you know, get evaluated by us, right? Because we always say, right, you know, the trial might not be successful, but you just spent three days, you know, or a week in a residency setting and, and, and getting that experience and seeing if you are ready for that or not. If you are, you know, there's no uh, downside to it, right? And, and you know, our, our, our marketing department does a really good job with social media and telling the story and highlighting all the successes, right? And, and you know, the upcoming camps and so forth, right? So, for the younger players, like this year, we have 2012s, 11s, 10s coming to, you know, came to the winter camp, and there's absolutely three or four that are really, really good, right? Obviously, too young for residency, but we will be inviting them in in the next, you know, two years in to train with our youngest team, right? Even though they're up a couple of age groups up, but just to kind of get them slowly eased in and see, because we always emphasize it, it it's got to be a feat both ways. If I am super high on, on and rate the player really, you know, really highly, uh, um, you know, and he doesn't want to be here, it's a moot point, right? Um, so we're trying to, you know, really kind of establish that 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 connection, that trust, uh, and their belief that this is the best next step for them, right? Um, so you know, uh, camps are probably the best start, right, to be evaluated. Yes, like I said, we try to scout at many events and then, you know, reach out to the families and so forth and then invite them in. Uh, uh, but there's so many that we oversee, right? All of us, right? No matter how well we all do our jobs in all academies, not just us, right? Um, there's always going to be player two or three, right? That you just never go to that remote area, right? And they got nothing there. They've outgrown their environment. Yeah, bring them in. Let's see how he does. Let's see how he feels about it, Right. And then go from there. Could be start of something special, right? Or it could be a good sign for him. Well, I'm not ready for this, which again is fine, right? Uh, you you get valuable information out of it. So that's probably um, um, you know the best way to 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 start. Obviously, you know sometimes they reach out to us from you know I mean often, right? And and with videos and so forth, and we review that. Highlights are called highlights for a reason, right? So you're gonna have an idea about a player or his level, but you also kind of see what's around him, right? Um, so, um, but with that said, right, if it sparks interest, we'll organize, a, you know, a, an individual trial, right, to come in, um, you know, outside of camps, right? Because then it's easier for us to measure as well against our boys rather than a camp that's a lot of different quality levels, right? Because uh, it's an open yeah. camp, right? Well, I'd say, Mihai, if you got your VHS tape player all fired up there, I've, I've got some 21, 22 year old highlights of myself to hey, send you along. Now. Fire away, <laughs> but, brother. Uh, I, I still have a VHS player, so <laughs> send it over. Great. It's a little, yeah, it's a little grainy. I can definitely, uh, now that I've learned how to edit, I can definitely make, a, <laughs> make myself look a little better, add some flames. And, uh, 
All right. So uh, lastly, Miha, what would having a player go right from your program, right from the Residency Academy, directly to FC Barcelona at 18, uh, what would that mean to you eventually down the road? I mean, that's a, yeah, for us as staff, that's a dream come true, right? I mean, obviously, it's a dream come true for the player, right? <laughs> and the family, but, uh, you know, obviously, that's what we try to do on a daily basis, right? We try to prepare them for that. We try to open these doors. We try to provide these opportunities. It's again, we always say we got all the tools and all the resources here. It's up to you to do the work, right? Um, but I think we're getting closer and closer, right? Because with all these opportunities, with Julian, that's a big step, right? Um, it just proves that, you know, that that that, 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 that 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 direct pathway is there, right? While there are obstacles, right? And you need to show quite a bit of patience because from if you're really good, let's say you're Barcelona good, from the age of 16 to 18, unless you have a passport, right? There's going to be so much interest and so many nice words thrown at you from all sides, right? And so how do you keep a player like that here challenge him enough right uh, um you know and that's where we're exploring you know we've done a lot of upsl we're exploring usl we're you know like because that would be i think you mentioned it earlier just to finish up quickly i know you have uh, we're running out of time but um you know barcelona doesn't really have that club right so if they could have something like that in the states right which i know has always been uh, a, a thought an idea right uh, um on, on whatever level, right, it could be that bridge, right, that, that a 16-year-old Brooklyn doesn't have to go to, to Houston, right, but can can stay here, can play yourself, and then, you know, uh, slide over when he's 17 and a half, right? Uh, uh, because they absolutely love yeah. him. He was there three times, right? And, and you know, it's so... Um, but, of course, right, it, same thing happened, right? He, you know, went with Julian, right? Galaxy threw an offer, prof you know, professional deal. Our boys don't go to other academies. Right, our boy, like even Caden, right? He didn't go to Red Bull Academy. He went to their second uh, team, right, and played, uh, uh, you know, in the USL, right. So, uh, which was great for him, right? It was a good step, uh, you know, and it worked out. And he was on the bench for Leipzig the other day, right? Hopefully, he gets, uh, you know, some minutes in a few few months or a few weeks. But, uh, but anyway, that would be, you know, that's the ultimate goal, right? Uh, um, you know, when we are trying to really talking about growth, right? Really kind of growing further. To provide that next level so that you can get that bridge kind of closed right because right now it's like this you gotta make that jump but there's a lot of patience necessary here right so a lot of players yeah. understandably don't want to wait that long right because it's nothing's guaranteed once you get there too right yep so hopefully that uh that that, that answers the question yeah yeah, certainly. And at that age, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I mean, I have a, I just wrote an article on Pablo Torre on the, on the, on Barcelona.com about yeah. how, yeah, at that age, you just, you, you have to be playing. You do not want to be wasting time sitting on a bench or just trying to absorb things in training. You want to be playing. You want to be in those moments. Um, yeah, certainly. And as you said, I, I, the financial investment is always the part that kind of gets lost in the discourse that these things are very expensive. So there is, again, a reason why I think Kool Aid's. The reason you love your club is the same reason why Barcelona likely can't afford to put a club just willy nilly in the USL or in the third division of Brazilian football, right? There's a reason why FC Barcelona is the way it is yeah. and why they cannot afford that. Even if, again, even if, even if all the finances were hunky dory and great at the club, which obviously they aren't, you know, transparently right now, but even if they were, right, it is a great investment. It's, it's way more money than anybody anticipates um, when you begin these projects. Uh, again, so getting a team anywhere is difficult. And those challenges can, as you mentioned, take time. So I think from 2017 to 2023, to have Duan Araujo at that point, to kind of bring this full circle to, to, to get a, not a first team contract, but a Barca athletic contract with the idea that he'll play preseason with the first team is again, a huge accomplishment, um, for what has been built in a short amount of time. Um, and I, for one, not only before talking to you, but I, for one, am excited, uh, not only, again, your academy at the residency, but almost seeing your academy residency as a blueprint potentially around the world for what FC Barcelona has already kind of in those other markets that they're looking at to potentially kind of copy the blueprint that you're uh, current, uh, currently making. So, um, Miha, thank you so much for joining the show. I think this is uh, all and more that I think people could have expected. Thank you so much. Well, my pleasure. I, I really, really enjoyed this, Dan. And I, uh, like I said, keep up the fantastic work you're doing, uh, you know, Always love a, a big Barca fan and, uh, you know, you bring a lot of good information uh, to light and uh, I love it. So uh, thanks again for the invite and uh, we'll chat soon, I'm sure, on the next signing. <laughs> 
yeah, I, I, I am excited to uh, hopefully, again, be talking about some of your kids in the future again. So, uh, again, that'll wrap up the show. You can follow him on Twitter, sure. Um, but, again, also just follow through to the Resney Program website. That's an easy way to kind of see what's happening and get an understanding. Again, we'll listen to what he said, <laughs> and that should help you. Again, start with the camps. Look for those camps. That is on the website, uh, and that'll be linked in the show notes down below as well. Then you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that, Facebook, closed Facebook, uh, Discord, YouTube. I think I got everything in the merch store. So thanks so much for listening to the show. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. The Force of Our Side.